Today I'm yes. speaking with Pete Zielk from Iron Savior. How are you doing today, Pete? Well, pretty good. Thank you. Um, yeah, nothing wrong today. <laughs> good. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that everything's going well. Um, yeah, I've been listening to Iron Savior for the last, I don't know, three days straight, listening to just about everything there is. And, uh, man, I, I never get never get tired of listening to Iron Savior. The music is so good and so clever and so powerful and so positive and so filled with joy. I'm so glad you're still doing it after 25 plus years. Well, thank you. <laughs> One more can I say. <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> I, I would like to know the impetus be, uh, behind the second this is the second time you've done this, but this is Reforged Ironbound. What was the motivation to do another re-recording of all the classic noise era tracks? Well, the main reason obviously hasn't changed um, since all the rights are still not with us um, of the original recordings. And so we have no control about all the, the old noise catalog. And um, that was the general, the basic idea of doing a Reforged volume number one. And since it was quite successful and um, fans obviously liked uh, what we do, what we did with uh, on the Reforged album. Um, it was quite clear to me, actually it was already clear when I was doing volume one that there will be volume two. Um, just to give you an example, um, of course, since it's called Riding on Fire, the first one, the, the song Riding on Fire has to be on it. But what about Starborn, which is a, a really great song as well. And um, so it wasn't on the first one, but it's a song that is, is it's totally even as important as the Riding on Fire Fire and Savior. And so that is the reason why we are doing now Iron Bound Volume Number Two. Okay, that makes sense. Which which your favorite of the Noise Era albums? I, I don't like have any. No, I no, I don't. I, I, honestly, I don't have a favorite album from from that era, and I don't have a favorite album. In general, in concern, <laughs> in terms of Iron Savior, I mean, there are albums which are important for the band. Maybe there are some albums which are more important, for example, just to pick one, The Landing or the first debut, which are really like special albums because they were made at a special time um, and so on and the force. But um, no, I can't really say that I have a favorite album. I definitely Unification is the second one, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's my favorite of all Iron Savior. That's just, I don't know, what, getting the first Iron Savior, working with Kai Hansen and then the songs and everything like that. And then when we came out with Unification, it was like, okay, this is a this is a band I'm definitely going to follow beautifully. Um, what was it like working with Kai Hansen again? Because obviously if you re-recorded re all these tracks, Kai obviously came back to help you do some of the classics. That's right. I mean, uh, as you just mentioned, Kai has been with Iron Savior for the first three albums, and then uh, with Condition Red, we split ways, uh, because Kai was uh, just too busy with uh, um, building up Gamma Ray, and uh, and always, there was always too little time for Iron Savior, which was a little bit confusing at that time, and didn't help Iron Savior actually to develop as an own independent force. And we suffered from that <laughs> quite a couple of years, I have to admit, um, because, um, of course, um, at the beginning of the project, Kai brought a lot of attention to Iron Savior. But on the other hand, I mean, uh, not being fully at, well, at full throttle uh, ready for Iron Savior also, well, slowed things a little bit down here and there and also um, didn't made and always made Iron Savior look like it's something like the little brother of Gummery or something like that. And um that took quite some time to get rid of this ghost of the of the past, so to speak. And um, since it also was kind of annoying uh, at, after a while that people still, after we did Condition Red, we did Bettering Ram and blah, 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 a lot of albums without Kai. And there were always in interviews, these Kai questions, from not from everybody, but from some people. And um, I was getting a little bit sick of that and, and, and really put it, wrote in my books, okay, we really have to be abstinent music-wise, Kai and me, to make... The world understand Iron Savior is Iron Savior and Kai Hansen is Kai Hansen. Right. And I think uh, from I think with the landing, people finally really understood this. And um, so I think this after I think it's been 15 years by now that we stopped collaborating. I thought 
okay, it's it's good now, and the world has understood that Kai is Kai and Pete is Pete. And yeah, right. um, if he if, if if I ask Kai to play his solo, then it's just gonna be fine, and nobody will 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 call Irene Savior a Kai Hansen band again. So that's the reason why I dared to 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 call Kai and ask him if he would be interested in playing his original stuff. And of course he was. And uh, yeah, it was really great. Um, we had a really great time going back to the days, you know, and uh, sort of kind of kind of like relive all that. That because there has been a lot of good stuff, of course, uh, in, in from those times. And um, yeah, we both enjoyed that very much, and uh, I think the outcome is really great. And uh, well, let's see what comes from that in the future. <clears throat> I actually never considered Iron Savior um, a Kai Hansen band. I always thought Iron Savior was its own entity that you formed, and that uh, Kai contributed in songs like "Watcher to the Sky" and when he sang on it. But he was yes, a guest musician. I never considered it a Kai Hansen band. I know, I know, I know. I, I only said some people, you know, oh, and. Okay, okay. Uh, and not not all people. I mean, I know but that still, most it must of the have been people. Frustrating for you to have people assume that. Yeah, it was it was kind of frustrating, you know. It was like let's say in the beginning it was like twenty percent, and also it, but most of the time it were people from from let's say uh, bigger and more important medias who, oh, okay. who who didn't who did well, and also who, who, who I don't know that that is the past, you know. Right. I was annoyed by this. At, at the time, but today I'm I'm really good. No no hard feelings to that anymore. <laughs> well, I actually wanted to ask you about your your history early on when you, when you and Kai were just teenagers, because you had that band Gentry and Second Hell, where you guys actually did songs that became yeah. Halloween songs like Phantoms of Death and Murder and Victim of Fate. Is it true that he helped write Heading for Tomorrow with you as well? Um, yeah, um, Heading to Tomorrow was was the, the, actually the, the, at that time the song was called Second Hell. Okay, it was and, the name of the band. Okay. Yeah, it was the name of the band, and it was the name of the song uh, Second Hell. And for example, the entire mid part of Heading for Tomorrow is more or less um, um, Second Hell. Okay. Uh, we, and um, uh, a good deal of the of the of the of the, of the parts, um, the verse, bridge, and so forth and so and so forth are. Our um, second, I have an old recording, and um, and it's 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 amazing that uh, that there's. I mean, of course, Kai added some new elements and, and stuff right, like that, right, right, working with and Kai reworked it a little bit. But uh, but uh, it was still um, well. I mean, the, the old version was still there in a way. You know? <laughs> Would you and Kai ever want to release any of the Second Hell recordings or any of the early demos that? became Halloween and later Gamma Ray songs? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah, no, not, not really, not really, because um, it, it would be, it would be for some really diehard fans, it might be interesting as a time oh, document yeah. or so, something like that, you know, but the recordings are, honestly, they are so bad. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 that it's, it's not possible to listen to them, and some. And I mean, we were really teenagers, you know. Right, 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 right. And uh, of course, crazy. they might be, they might be entertaining. And I think on the last, wasn't it that on on, on the was it Sky Quest or the Kid or Get Killed album? I don't know. I think I made a promo CD which carried, which had one, which had one, uh, one of these old recordings on it. I think Overkill, which something. The, the, was with overkill was something like the, the like the uh, like the original idea for the uh, watcher and the sky chorus that is okay. that came from overkill oh interesting and um, yes it, it's interesting but not more honestly it, the, the recordings are really we didn't have multi track recordings i mean for the time and for and and for for being inventive you know to create uh, <laughs> recording situations that we could actually play on pre-recorded stuff and make overdubs as so called um that was of course of course kind of cool but i mean listening to them today nah not really <laughs> obviously even even back then you were a huge fan of judas priest and judas priest i mean listening to phantoms of death you can tell that you were listening to judas priest um maybe even a little van halen but um yeah that's still, right. that's, that's and still also my, little maiden <laughs> yeah of course 
that's still my favorite Halloween song to this day. And I loved it when you re-recorded it as Iron Savior um, on a Halloween tribute. But um, your love for Judas Priest and the number of Judas Priest songs you've covered on uh, Facebook, you've actually contributed to um, some of my posts. I'm actually Metal Milieu. So oh, okay, cool. So you contributed. Uh, I started a little controversy when I posted about Turbo and wearing my Judas Priest Turbo shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, and, yeah. And a lot of people have issues with Turbo. But it's good. I, I've been really grateful to list, uh, to watch and read uh, your contribution uh, based on whether it's Point of Entry or Turbo or some of these somewhat maligned Judas Priest albums. I would assume Judas Priest is your favorite band. It is, of course, yes. Uh, I th that Judas Priest defines metal for myself, you know. Okay. And you've done, um, including Japanese bonus tracks and everything like that, I count seven Judas Priest songs. Probably, uh, <laughs> probably you're right. Yes, I, 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 yeah, I think we did delivering living the after, goods. Living after midnight. I've just living not after midnight. midnight um, electric eye. Electric eye. Right. Then, um, yeah, we just uh, desert plains, of course. Yeah, we just talked about yeah. that. Yeah, and you do them so well, so it tells <clears> you to tell that you're a big time Judas Priest fan. But changing gears, you've offered on the on the new stuff. You 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 cover. The Eurythmics, that's kind of hard to say. Um, that was interesting. I've never heard a metal version of the Eurythmics, Sweet Dreams, and you do such a great job on that. What motivated you to do that? Well, I mean, the, the, the actually, I was, I, when I, what, the, the, the trigger of that was that, uh, that I was asked by HBO um, if they could use my crazy version I did um, on, the, on the Condition Red album. They wanted to, to, to use it for a, for a TV commercial for one of their shows. And um, that brought me back to the, to the idea that it's, it's in general a cool idea to, to pick a pop song, something completely different, and turn it into a, into a, a nice metal song. And uh, I just had this, this, uh, this spontaneous idea of, uh, yeah, let's see if, if your rhythmics, uh, Sweet Dreams, is working. Um, I had kind of like a vision in my head, and so I, I tried it out, and it, and it, and it, and it just... So I started to work, and so I continued on and finished up the song. And whoop, boom, there I was with this finished song, and I didn't know what to do with it. And of course, I could have saved it um, and put it in a drawer and, and use it for the for the upcoming studio album next year. But I'm, in general, I'm not a big fan of keeping things in drawers for 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 um, for for a long time, you know. If you do something, it needs to to get out, you know. Right, and, of course. And since the Re Reforged was the only release that was available <laughs> to put it on, I I said, yeah, okay, it's it's not related to anything on that, and it's uh, but it's a new track, and uh, maybe somebody uh, finds it interesting or somebody likes it, oh, and great. and a lot of journalists will ask uh, or fans, well, what's this song doing on this album? <laughs> oh, I think it's great. I think it's great to hear a song that, you, that when you listen to the Iron Savior songs re-recorded, you say, oh, okay, I know this song, I know this song, I know this song, and then Sweet Dreams comes on. It's like, oh, this is awesome. They had they did a cover of the Eurythmics and they metalized it. It sounds so good. Because um, the only other cover I've heard was Marilyn Manson and he butchered it. Uh, how come there's two different versions of Crazy? I love the cover of Crazy by Seal. Um, but you got two different versions. You've got the edit, radio edit, and you got the normal version. Why was that? Well, no, that was only because I thought it's maybe a good idea to have a radio edit, which is not five minutes long, um, to get some airplay. It didn't work out yet, but uh, maybe somebody stumbles across this uh, version and says, hey, wow, it's something I can play in my radio show. Cool. <laughs> but HBO is using the original version of Crazy as, as a commercial, you said? Yeah, it was. Um, are you familiar with with one? It's it's a it's it's a it's a cartoon. It's an adult cartoon series called. Um, <clears throat> what was the name of it? Let me think. Um, oh yeah, close enough actually. Close enough. And close enough is the TV show. And for the second season, for the for the trailer, for uh, they used the, the the this my Iron Savior crazy version. Awesome. I've actually not seen the show. I don't have HBO, so I'm not familiar with it, but I'll definitely look into it. I know friends that do have HBO, so I'll look into it. But that's cool that you they used your crazy version as an advertisement yeah. for that. That's yeah. awesome. That's 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 cool. And you know, these classic songs you've rec both uh, five years ago and now with Reforged Two, Ironbound. Um, you, the lineup you have, you 
is it do you feel it's better re-recording these songs with the lineup you have vers versus the lineup you had back then you know 18 20 years ago um yeah of course i mean uh, today i'm much more experienced and um, i've of course i kind of knew what i was doing back in the days also but uh I mean, here and now with, with completely evolved production techniques and, um, technology, um, and also my own experiences, of course, it's a different thing to, to record those songs, you know. And, um, of course, it's in, in a way, it's, it's a little bit, it's different than creating something completely new because in a way, of course, you're reproducing, uh, most of the time. But on the other hand, it's also interesting because, I mean, even though I wrote the songs, I really can't remember every part and can play it right and know it right. <laughs> you know, of course, I have to. I have to really listen back and um, and and, uh, and learn how to play them again. You know, so it it is quite a challenge. And well, I mean, recording twenty twenty songs was quite a project. I have yes. a little bit underestimated this, but uh, it took really some time and kept me busy for quite a while. But uh, I have to say that I I really like the outcome. I think the 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 sound and and the production is really awesome, and uh, it also still breathes this uh, this Iron Savior feeling from the from the uh, from the original recordings. Um, even though I can understand that people say ah I, 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 I it's nice what you did there, Pete, but I stick with the originals. That is something that I can understand because. Let's go. Maybe, for example, you you you're you're 16 year old kid and you start listening Iron Savior with, let's say, the Unification album, and uh, and you have a great time. And all summer, this album is spinning around in your car and wherever you go, and uh, you have great memories compared connected to this to this very album with the, with this with its very sound, you know. And now, if the sound of, for example, if, if the sound changes and it sounds more modern, it's not the same anymore. Your memories don't connect to that you know you, you're feeling something is wrong you know <laughs> um so i can understand that uh, that, uh, that, uh, that that these re-recordings album is it's of course something different than in than a, a new creation a new studio album but uh, well i mean there are also a lot of fans who say yeah um both versions are really cool i really enjoy uh, the the new re-recordings because they are they they sound of course better and uh, and and they they really they really have great songs and blah 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 um, and now we have both you know the, we have we have the old ones and we have the the new stuff because yeah. I mean if you if you buy a Reforge you don't have to throw away your old Iron Savior CDs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those fans who appreciates both. I remember the day I bought Unification. I remember that summer I played Unification. I even bought some of the EPs you put out because of the Priest cover, yeah. because of the Crocus cover. But I also appreciate the new the new re-recordings with the current lineup and the current production values. So I, I, I like to have my cake and eat it, too. I think it's great that you do that. I did have a question about the song Living on a Fault Line. I thought that was a cover because it doesn't sound like Iron Savior. But you mentioned it was just a Japanese bonus track. Exactly, it's a ballad that uh, that at the time was written by Pizzo, and um, it was just not, um, for my taste, it was just not fitting to the Battering Ram album where it is yeah, uh, originally exactly. derived from. And so, since I I didn't want to turn it down, I made it. I, it was the compromise to make it the, the Japanese bonus track. Um, probably I would have decided differently uh, from from my point of view today, or, uh, uh, because I think it is really a great song and and I like it, and so I I think it's a good it's a good it's 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 good now that it that it gets is honor you know maybe a little late but uh, it's it's a worthy Iron Savior song and and uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with it, and uh, it's good That's that good it's hear. on this album now. Yeah, because it doesn't really fit the, con the conceptual value of Battering Ram or the style or the music. No, no, ex exactly. But, uh, but uh, you know, um, <clears throat> I have evolved myself as well, and uh, leaving, you know, and I have delivered myself from concept issues. <laughs> 
Well, but I mean, an Iron Savior in of itself still always going to be conceptual because of what it stands for and what you know the album. The album yeah, that's seems. right. But you know, but uh, I'm talking about like uh, like like strict concepts like on uh, like on uh, Condition Red or the, the or the first albums, you know, where everything is about the Iron Savior story and and, right, and stuff right. like that. Uh, we, I have, uh, we have, we have left that that behind. Luckily, I have to say, because um, there's so much more happening in the world, and so much more that moves me and inspires me for lyrics than 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 just the Iron Savior. You know, right. the Iron yeah. Savior is a very important part of the band Iron Savior, of course, and and I always will uh, will enjoy writing lyrics about uh, the Iron Savior universe. But it's also uh, other things happening, you know, that moves, that moves little Pete. <clears throat> That's good to hear. That's good to hear that, you know, there's not in chapter nine of Iron Staver that, that, you know, you can kind of put it to rest and write about other things as well, but still know that always the, that was always the building blocks of the band and the essence and the main theme of the band. So it's good to balance both, I think. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, um, of course, people would be disappointed if there would be just like nothing uh, from uh, of the Iron uh, Savior on on the next album. Um, but but making a concept album, okay. I mean, of course, never say never. Maybe I sometime <laughs> in the in, in the future have the desire to say, oh wow, yeah, I have, I have this great idea of this awesome story and everything unfolds to me totally, and I have to do this. I have a vision. I don't know, you know. Uh, but right now, or I find it more more satisfying to to have, let's say, a little bit of Iron Savior, like two or three or maybe four songs about uh, in, in the Iron Savior universe, and the rest, whatever comes to my mind, you know, and whatever moves me, whatever I think it is important to talk about. And uh, if I look at the news, for example, right now, there's lots to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, politics. <clears throat> And, you know, what's going on with the world and everything yep. like that. Those are all important matters, you know, and subject matters that can be written about as well. Have you written, is the new album complete yet or is it still in the process? It's in the process. I mean, I'm, I'm, I have like, I think eight songs are more or less uh, ready to go. And, um, but I'm quite, uh, but uh, so far we're, we're good in the timing and, uh, uh, we're, we're not delayed, and I think I will be able to deliver the album in time so that it can be released next year. Um, I, actually, I, I, I don't know exactly when release is planned for next year. I right, think right. it's just, I think it's May again that we are focusing on. Still working with AFM as you have for the last decade plus? Exactly, yes. I'm still, uh, still uh, very happy with AFM. And uh, so no need for a change from there. All right, Pete. Well, it's been great talking to you, reminiscing about the past, talking about Iron Savior in general, and just, you know, I mean, I think it's great that you did both. I, I love the old stuff, and I love the re-recorded versions of the old stuff, and I love the current albums you keep putting out <laughs> uh, annually. So, and I love the videos you do, the tongue in cheek. And there's one thing that you'll always write about and a theme you've written about since the beginning, and that's heavy metal and your love for heavy metal. And I think that's so great that you champion metal and that you sing about metal and you write about metal in every way and every fashion, because that's what it really is all about. To play it loud, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, you have a good day and I look forward to talking about when the new album comes out. Thanks, Ben, and uh, thanks for your interest and your support and uh, and everything. And have a have a great day. I think is it? Yeah. Right. Well, for you it's probably evening. Yeah, it's for, evening. For, for but me, it's for you it must be it's afternoon. Yeah. All right. And well, then enjoy the rest of the day and uh, yeah, take a listen to to the new album and then have a beer or whatever. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> okay, my friend. Okay. Right. Bye bye. Talk to you next time. Okay. Okay. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.